Hi, I'm Lee Teschler with EE World and Design World. I'm here with Mark. Mark is on a team from the University of Leeds who've developed a device for helping to rehabilitate people who've had strokes. He's got one of his uh, instruments that they've developed right here behind us. He's going to tell us a little bit about what they did. Mark, um, explain the mechanism that's operating quite nicely behind us and the uh, the display we're seeing behind that. Absolutely. So we're a team from the University of Leeds. We're called Team Allen, which stands for Advanced Upper Limb Autonomous Rehabilitation. And it really means that what we're trying to do here is to help post-stroke patients regain their ability to move their arms and regain their full independence back. So what we did is a rehabilitation device that helps people move their arm in 2D space and as they move it, they've sort of received the same rehabilitation as if they did from physiotherapists. And over here we can see a couple of robotic arms we made. So essentially what we do here, we try to go from research to industry and to market. So what we try to do is to commercialize these rehabilitation devices and actually make them available for patients. And to do that we need to test them. And the best way to test them with, is with other robots. So we have robotic arms trying to mimic patients, and that way we can do durability tests over long periods of time and actually get some actual results we can show to uh, approval agencies, and that way we can actually get these commercial uh, rehabilitation devices straight to patients' homes. Can you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the individual axes that you have operating on this arm? Yeah, so absolutely. So we can see two arms over here. So we started with the first arm which was internally actuated. So we got four degrees of freedom on the first 3D printed arm. And that's essentially just being powered by hobby servo motors. So we prototyped very quickly on this just to get our kinematics and so sort of idea what technology is behind these sort of you know, robotic arms. As we moved on, we actually created another prototype, something completely different as to what the standards are. So here we have an externally actuated arm. And here we have three uh, uh, sort of two linked uh, systems that are moving the arm in such a way that it's like a puppet so the arm itself is not really actuated internally but we've got like three uh, devices that are sort of uh, 2D planar link devices that are moving the uh, shoulder, the wrist and the elbow and that way we can actually mimic the human uh, behaviors in the same similar way that patients would do. I see. And uh, how did you decide uh, what kind of forces and pressures to, to put on the, uh, the links to, to mimic a human being? Uh, yes, so, so essentially there's a lot of research been done at the University of Leeds, so we're not the first team that's actually looking into it. So what we did is we just based it on the previous research that's been done. We, we looked at uh, you know what sort of uh, forces patients provide, and then we even went forward, we went actually uh, topped it up, and we said, okay, well, how far can we actually go? And we found that this arm, can actually produce more force than the patients and even regular uh, sort of you know capable human scan and what we found is that we can do stress testing as well so for approval we can not only say we can mimic patients we can even say we can go furthermore we can actually stress test the devices and provide even more forces that way. Cool. Now your first prototype you used hobby uh, servo motors. That's right. What powers this one? Uh, so this one is powered by uh, just uh, DC motors we have inside but, so that was a bit more difficult. So we've got belt drives inside over there, and there's two motors for each one of those devices. Uh, and those motors are just basically high power DC motors. Uh, that way, obviously, home, uh, hobby servo motors, they've got feedback already inside, whereas here we had to sort of figure it out by ourselves. So what we have here is we all, we've got encoders and potentiometers. So we use encoders for relative feedback and potentiometers for absolute. So you can use potentiometers to calibrate encoders and encoders actually most of the time are a bit more accurate. So we're just basically trying this sort of synergy of sensors just to make sure that we're actually getting very, very accurate feedback because to do our calculations we need that. We need to make sure that it's spot on. Okay, and uh, we've got kind of a cool uh, display behind us. Tell us what's going on there. So one of our teammates, uh, Jack, he's made a game in the uh, Unity engine where basically uh, this isn't for our demo, but this could be adapted to any sort of situation, even for patients who really need to rehabilitate. So what we have is just a snake game that's been played. So we've got apples generated uh, in real time. And the apple is actually the demand position for the end effect of the arm. And the arm tries to reach these apples. So it basically gets trajectories generated and then tries to reach all uh, these apples. Yeah, interesting. So what, uh, Mark, just one or two things what one or two things were the toughest for you to accomplish in this project? Uh, I think it's just uh, sort of uh, getting all the team together and just trying to find new ways to approach these problems. Because for instance, the first time we used a uh, just an open source design, so we quickly prototyped and we learned a lot. But I think uh, 
for, for the next generation, for the next generation of the arm, what we did is not really, I think we couldn't even find any sort of similar projects been done with them before. So I think for us just to figure out what, how to do it, because it's never been done before, and just prototyping, obviously squeezing everything in a couple of semesters because we're still master students. I think that from technical point of view, just figuring out, you know, the mathematical models as well. And there's a, there's a, some, of, some of the team members put a lot of, uh, a lot of effort into that. And I, th I think uh, there's, there's been some good results. Great. Well, it's an interesting project, Mike. So uh, I appreciate thanks, you Lee. taking us through it. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.